The biggest advice that I can give you right now is tell absolutely everyone you know that you are looking for a job. It doesn't matter who it is, your, your neighbor, your uncle, your cousin, you never know who knows somebody who has a position open which might actually fit your qualifications, okay? That's really my biggest message. Also, uh, don't be afraid to approach people. I have done that quite often. I did it for my job search. Um, it's, uh, it might be a little bit intimidating at the beginning, especially when you've just graduated to speak to somebody who is a manager, a vice president, a director in a company. But what I have found throughout my career is that those people are the people who want to help you. These people are leaders. They are in those positions because they have worked with other people. And 99% of the time, they're more than willing and happy to answer your questions, to help you with any concerns that you have. And you never know, those people might know somebody else who might have a job that might work for you. Um, so that's kind of basically um, the message that I have in terms of networking. Right now I'm a business developer, I do sales. So for me, networking is more of a way of life. Um, you'd be surprised where I've gotten my clients, people at my hairdresser. I you know, talk to absolutely everyone that you know because most of the positions in the companies, um, in the small to mid-sized companies especially, get filled through referrals. Somebody knows somebody else, they came and did an interview, and they got the job. So this is really, most of the time, 99% um, of the time, to the people that I know how it happens. So yes, go ahead and apply online. Um, they, you, I, I know people who have gotten jobs that way as well. But on top of that, try to think of people that you know and talk to them. Um, and then they might be able to help. I came out of Sheridan in 2004, unofficially, and graduated. I just came out again. And I had two short films. And um, one of the biggest things in terms of networking that happened was um, there was a guy, Sheridan has at the end of the year these um, student screenings. And um, they have like a little jury. It's just for fun. I mean, you submit your short, your student film, and, and they watch it. One of the guys on the jury, his name was Dan Lyon, he was um, a producer in the film industry. So him and two other people watched all of our shorts, and they, he really loved System of Units. So, um, and I was told that this guy was a big producer in the Canadian industry, I didn't know who he was, I didn't really care, but he um, liked the short. And over the next couple of years, I started developing this feature film of Hummel, which is based on the short I did in India. Um, and I realized, again, I needed like a 1.5 million, but actual money, 1.5 million dollars to do this film. Um, I'd go to all these events, and I kept seeing Dan around, and every time I go up to him at like a party or something, and I'd be like, "Hey, you know, my name is Richie. Met me and shared and liked my short." He didn't even remember me. He would just be like, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> and I did that about 20 times over various events, and it was the kind of thing where I'd like be leaving a room and I'd be like, "Hey, that's Dan again." And I didn't even know why I did it. I just kept going up to him and reintroducing myself and reintroducing myself to the point where it became repetitive, and then he remembered my face. So come 2005, Dan is appointed the head of. Uh, regional funding in Telephone Canada, which is a feature film funding portion of, of, of the federal government. He was the head of that. And when we went to apply for our short film, for our feature film, he really remembered me. And we got our pro package in and we raised $1.5 million. And for me to do that, you know, a few years out of the gate, even that within the industry is very, very rare. And that happened through networking. And after we started that process, I had to assemble my team of people who I wanted to make this. And the same thing, I just kept going to events, kept going to events, kept going to events, and meeting other producers, meeting people of like mind who wanted to do the same thing I did. And so the team I have, I mean, the company I run, which is Poor Man's Production, is me and two other producers. And I met those producers through networking. And those are my life producing partners now. So, and now, we're, I mean, we've done the film, and it's done critically really well. So the government has said, we'll finance your next film. So now I'm in a position where I am a director, I'm CEO of this company, and I'm financing, I'm getting financing through your tax dollars for my film. <laughs> and that was because of networking. I mean, it did the work, but there's no set path. There's nothing for you to, to be taught how to do this. You just meet people. And I have a million other stories of networking. Um, I guess when I first graduated, it was uh, you know your first year and stuff. You don't really know about information interviews and networking a lot and you're sitting in front of your computer trying to you know, 
going to look at Monster. I mean, that, that's, that's okay if it works for you. But for the most part, I found that doing information interviews, um, which is a form of networking, was absolutely fabulous. Um, it, it helped me, um, it actually just made looking for work so much fun. I've actually had a great time, I've actually had a greater time looking for work than actually, actually when I got my job, which is really weird. Um, but it, it was, it's just, it's just great. It's, it's great getting out there, making the call, talking to this stranger, and you know, it's just, it's, it's fun. You're getting to know this person as well as, you know, letting them see you. And, and it's, it is a two-way connection in that you're offering yourself, you're offering yourself as a potential employee to them, you know? And, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's really exciting that way. But I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that is just such an integral part of where you, where you need to be. Do, do you know what I mean? Anything you think about, there's gatekeepers all over the world in every field. There's somebody who's holding the keys for you to, for a barrier for you to get beyond. Uh, whether, again, for me, it's, it's financing and funding sources for other people, you know, so it's, it's you're trying to get a job from somewhere. Everywhere there's gatekeepers. And chances are they're not too different from you in terms of if you were one of those gatekeepers, let's say you were on a, on a jury of uh, arts council or you had uh, certain funds or you were trying to hire somebody and you have a stack of resumes versus you know a few people who are qualified, you know them personally, you'll, be, you'll take the easiest way out of your job. It's just like, you know what, just give it to the guy I know. I don't want to go through these resumes. Or even if I do, I know this guy better or whatever, I'll give it to him. That's generally how it works. The most important thing to, for you to do right now is to be enthusiastic, okay? Don't lose hope because it might take you a little while to get to where you want to get to. And don't lose the goal of where you want to get to. I always wanted to work in marketing, always. Ever since I started university, my four years at U of T, I did marketing. When I came out of school, everybody said, you're not going to get a job in marketing, forget it. You're gonna have to start driving the truck for Pepsi <laughs> or bringing the Kellogg's boxes to the store if you want to do that with your life. And you know what? I didn't take that. I, I, I think that there's many different things that can happen and what I did is that I was very, very persistent. It took me nine months to find my second marketing job. My first one, I was pretty lucky through the mentorship and obviously that was networking itself, I got that job. I got offered jobs in everything that you can possibly imagine. I got offered five HR jobs. I got offered jobs in different things. But I waited because I think it's worthwhile to, for you to be persistent to get to where you want to get to. I think the important thing to remember, well, what I've learned is you you've always got to be um, you've always got to approach employers or people you're going to be working with in an attitude of service to them. It's like, how can I be helpful to you? Because really, everybody just everybody just gives a crap about themselves. I'm sorry to say that, but they they, they only think about themselves in a sense. It's like, how is this? How is this person? How is this event? How is this how how is this thing going to benefit me? So it's like if you can go in with that attitude of like. How can I help you? You know, as opposed to what can you do for me? Do you know what I mean? That's always going to be um, a very successful approach because, like, like Richie said, you're, if you help each other out, you know, you're you're going to rise to the top together. And I totally believe that. So if you can have that sort of like servant attitude, um, I I think that would get you very far, and it would also keep you in a place that's that's humble instead of you know becoming very egotistical. I mean. Who wants to work with someone like that, really?